So in this video lesson, we're talking all about finding the areas of circles. And so the first thing we want to stop and think about is why is finding the area of a circle, or why is even thinking about finding the area of a circle a bit more difficult than, say, trying to find the area of a rectangle. And I'll have both of those here for your comparison, and go ahead and pause the video and see what you can think about. Why is it more difficult to talk about the area of a circle? Well, some of the things you may have thought thought of when you were thinking about why is it more difficult is you might have thought of, well, the circle has a curved edge. I'm not exactly sure what I can do with a curved edge because I'm used to talking about bases and heights with line segments. And talking about bases and heights is easy. You can measure those. And we can also talk about this rectangle at the right, which is covered in whole in square units. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 square units. And it covers 10 whole square units. And we can cover part of them if the rectangle were moved uh, or shrunk or enlarged. But when we have a circle, a circle doesn't even cover useful parts of square units. We've got to consider something else that is going on here. And so what we want to do is we want to look at this circle here. And I've split the circle into eight different parts because we're going to start playing with these parts and seeing if we can get them into uh, the kind of formation that we can use to actually find the area of the circle. So let's start with this blue segment being outlined in green. Well, if we start with that segment being outlined in green, we can go ahead, let's leave that there, but we're going to create another one so that we can move it and we can start talking about it. I'm going to put it face up, just right there. OK, one segment of the circle. It's 1 8 of the entire area of the circle. We have this pretty well set, so I'm going to sort of shade this in here just so that we've got it. I can't really do much with that again, so let's try it again. Take this area of the circle now outlined in red. Well, again, it in and of itself isn't too particularly helpful to us, but we can take it and move it and flip it. And if we put it up next to this one, we can see it almost it starts lining up with each other. Hmm. Well, all right, I've got two parts of a circle. It's still, it's giving me a quarter of the circle. I'm not sure exactly what I can, can do about that. Uh, but let's see where it goes. If we continue taking parts of the circle and moving them next to each other so that we continue to create this kind of shape here. And I'm only going to go through one more here. Turn this right side up there. So we can see it. Now we're starting to see a bit of a long, elongated shape start to appear. With an edge here, a sort of a curvy edge. You can see that it'll continue there. A bit of a slightly curvy edge here. And eventually it'll end up looking like this. In fact, it looks remarkably like a parallelogram when we actually get down to it. You can see the left curved side and the right curved side. Turns out that those are parallel. And you can sort of see the outline of a base coming up here. It's not quite precise, but we have the exact same thing on the other side. And it's almost like a parallelogram. We can find the area of this red parallelogram. And it turns out this red parallelogram is actually going to be the area of the entire circle on its own. Well, let's take a look at this. What is the base and what is the height? Well, the height is the vertical distance from the bottom to the top. This distance here is just the distance from the edge of the circle into the center. That's the radius. We can find out what the radius of a circle is. And for the base, well, we've sort of gone through the outside edges of the four blue sections and the outside edges of the four orange sections. That should look fairly familiar, not in this context, but we should see what the entire distance is around all four blue sections and all four red-orange sections. And that is just the circumference of the circle. And the circumference of the circle, we know the formula for that. That circumference formula is just 2 pi r. We're going to use it as 2 pi r rather than pi d. So t 2 times pi times the radius. But we're only taking half of the circumference when we're looking at a base. So we need to get rid of this too. And it turns out that our base is pi times the radius. Our height 
is the radius, and when we multiply those two things together, we end up with the area formula for a circle. Area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. And it's very important to notice that this is pi times the radius squared. Pi times the radius times the radius, not pi times 2 times the radius. It's worth reviewing that the exponent 2 really refers to the number of times that this r is multiplied by itself. r, in the case of a circle, always, always, always standing for radius. So r squared is r times r. It is not, which is why I have the equal sign with the slash through it, which means not equal. r squared is not the same as 2 times r. It is r times itself. And finally, the last thing we need to talk about, because we sort of glanced over it before, is this concept of pi. Now, pi is just a number. It's a number that can't be written as a fraction, and it cannot be written as a repeating or terminating decimal, so we have the Greek letter pi stand in for it. And pi, if we started writing out the digits, we would end up going on and on and on forever, and it never really repeats. So it's really not particularly helpful to try to look at this entire digit for pi. If we're taking pi times r squared, I don't want to take r squared and multiply it by this entire thing. So we, do one of two, so we do one of two things. Either we leave the pi as it is and, mul and just find the number for r squared, or we shorten pi down to 3.14. And for most cases, this will be enough to give us a, a close enough idea of the area of the circle. Remembering that this is always just an approximate guess, because pi goes on for longer and longer and longer, but this gets us very, very close. So 3.14 times the um, radius squared will give us an approximate value, whereas just leaving it as pi will give us an exact value. And so if you're a little bit confused on the exact value for right now, that's all right. We're going to see it in an example here. Um, we're going to find the area of this circle that has a radius of 5 meters. So go ahead and pause the video, remembering that the formula for the area of the circle, the area of the circle is just pi times r squared, and that when we use pi and actually use the decimal version of it, we approximate it with 3.14. Well, we're always going to start out with the idea of this radius squared. And with the idea of this radius squared, we're going to take the radius, which is 5. 5 squared is the same as 5 times 5, and that's 25. So we can look at this now in one of two ways. We can leave pi like it is and say that this is 25 times pi. That is a perfectly legitimate way to describe the area of the circle. However, if we wanted to find an approximation, find out, well, what exactly is 25 times pi, or what can I get close, maybe to a decimal point or two, then we're going to take our radius squared, 25, and multiply it by 3.14. And it turns out that when we multiply 3.14 by 25, I'm not going to go through the entire multiplication here for you, but we end up with 78.50. This 78.5 is only an approximation because it doesn't take into account every decimal place of pi. Whereas 25 times pi, even though it's not particularly helpful, we can't look at 25 pi and say, oh, it's about 78. And while it's not helpful in terms of a specific number, it is exact. So we have two different ways of writing this area. 25 pi is an exact number, because it's 25 times all of pi. We just have to be OK with leaving it like that. Or we can get to 78.5, which is a more helpful number for us to visualize and understand, OK, there's about 78.5 square meters covered by the circle if the radius were 5 meters. But Again, it's only an approximation because we've only used the first two decimal places and the whole number part, pi. So all of that together, find the exact and approximate areas for these circles with radiuses of 24 inches, 9 decimeters, 4 centimeters, and 2.5 miles. Again, approximate using pi is equal to 3.14, and for its exact form, just leave it as pi. All right, so for number one, we have the area of a circle is pi r squared. I'm going to be writing this on every single section here, so you should get used to seeing it and get used to using it. The radius is 24 
So when we square 24, we end up with 576. So for the exact number, it's just 576 times pi. And again, that is the exact value for this area. However, if we're looking for an approximate value for this area, one we can understand and visualize as, oh, this is the amount of area covered by the circle, then we multiply 576 times 3.14. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire multiplication here for you, but you can check your work. This entire thing is 1,808 and 64 hundredths. Again, inches squared, inches squared. So exact with 576 pi and approximate with 1,808 and 64 hundredths. For number two, we have to notice that this says the diameter is four centimeters. That means the radius is half of that, two centimeters. So area equals pi r squared. The area is equal to pi times the radius squared, which is four times pi. This is the exact number. If we want an approximation to sort of understand how many units there really is, we multiply 3.14 times 4, and we end up with 12.56. 12 and 56 hundredths centimeters squared. Moving on to number 3. Again, we're back to the radius. The radius is 9 decimeters. So to talk about the area of this circle, we start with area equals pi r squared. Again, always writing down this formula so we know exactly what's going on. Pi remains as it is for the moment. The radius is 9. 9 squared is 81, so the area is 81 pi. Again, this is the exact number. Now we're looking for the approximation, which we need to do by multiplying 3.14, which is pi, by 81. And when we multiply those two things together, we end up with 254 and 34 hundredths decimeters squared. Again, this is the approximate value. This is the exact value, 81 pi. And finally, a radius of 2.5 miles for number 4. That means we are going to take area equals pi r squared. Our radius is 2.5 pi times 2.5 times 2.5. 2.5 is 6.25 times pi. Again, exact. Finding the approximate value for this, we have 3.14 times 6.25. When we multiply those two things together, we end up with 19.625 miles squared. So the area is equal exactly to 6.25 pi, and the area is approximately, with a little squiggly equal sign, 19.625.